You're coming too. From Washington State to now sunny California. We've been at it for five years. It began with selling our previous boat and taking that money to buy tools and build a shed. We assembled keel pieces, poured the ballast, and raised all 16 frames in the first six months. There's a boat in there. Now, half a decade later, and at a slower but steady pace, we're in the water. We're salt and tar, and this is our life. Like, subscribe, and support if you can. Last time, you met Charlie. He's given us buckets of gear and helped by making our peril beads, belaying pins, and now, our dead eyes. We're still back in time for the beginning of this episode as we cut our teeth into the dead eyes, starting with two by six boards of black locust. We, uh, use this for that, pretty much for the handle, so the handle will be about as big as the uh, peril beads. Mm -hmm. I'll turn the long piece, narrow piece down to about three quarters plus a little bit and I can slip that through the inside of the wave mm -hmm. and then turn the handle. Oh sweet. So that'll work out good. Okay. Since the dead eyes are four inches round we have some meat left over and it just so happens to be enough to make a few more belaying pins. shrouds on the main and mizzen, so we need 16 eyes, or 8 pairs. 7, so that's 14 and 5. And then those are the same lengths. Now here we 14, got a, so yeah, that's 19. We got a boogie here. This might, oh, yeah, yeah. This might be a big... Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, and we got a knot there too. So we'll probably we'll only be able to get... A little bit short. Yeah. It's a beautiful spring day, and with everything in bloom, we're inspired to make progress. Charlie has been coaxing us to work on rigging, which is the next big advance in this project. Rediviva's hull is complete. She's in the water. Now, it's time to get her sailing. this way and we want to have the, the rope pulling across the green. That's cool. You can just shift that's... gears with it. My jig is a little so I go through these two outside ones and, and bore it a 64th over. Nice. <laughs> this 
this one I'm putting a little bit more tight on the bottom because there's a tiny little bit of sapwood. Um, and then mark the top. really crucial that once you make one hole, you need to let this move. And I, I put all of these in the orientation, let me just double check it. Okay. That looks fine. And then since this one has a little bit of funky okay. donkey there, I'll just flip it over and then just leave it a little bit more in the bottom. Okay. Maybe start marking and laying out another board. <laughs> I think 13 or 12, I think we lost. And we lost five. We ended up making 24 total. At the time, we weren't sure if we were going to add another set of shrouds to the main or not. So either way, we were going to have spares. The next step was the bandsaw. Removing all the corners, getting it mostly round, so then we can take it to the lathe. Ruthie, I, mm -hmm. I was going to start this one. Okay. When you finish drawing that one. <clears throat> so tension on. Fire it up. In the olden days, they'd have some kids back there turning it by hand. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we're done. We're still not, we're not still not round yet. We're cleaning up, but not quite there. some spot here mm -hmm. so we could finish them all they'll be all the same all right I think that one might be done then cool so we'll take it out right. I'll get back to cut <laughs>
we came back from lunch, we moved on to the next phase. been cutting dead eyes all day. Charlie is a beast. Um, it's been such a cool process and he took the time before we came over too to do some templates so he can put it on the lathe and then template so that we can mark out the holes and oh they're looking so awesome. This is so exciting to get this done. Um, I can see it just lighting up in Garrett's eyes. <laughs> the generosity and kindness of all of you guys watching out there I mean, this is this is making our life. I mean, more than our day. It's just everything, and um, yeah, I'm, we're both so excited and so happy to share all of this with you. It's yeah, it's it's crazy. So thank you. <laughs> That's the last one. Go. Please? Yeah. as much groove as I had in the last one? So well, see that's I an mean, eighth of an inch deep. That one is, I think, an eighth by, uh, that was my scale. I mean, the hard part is, you know, as much as I'd like to get it done, part of me is also feeling like maybe should hold off on that part until I you know exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. Because um, I'm still, I've still been in between how I'm going to do that. Am I going to use flat bar? Or am I going to use round? Am I going to use blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So maybe I should do a little bit more research uh, and think a few things over. And then that way we know for sure before we put the, right. the grooves in them. I think that would probably be the smarter thing to do. Okay. We still got a lot done today. I mean, oh, we're yeah. we're... Yeah. Most of the way there. Yeah. yeah. It was a year later before we worked together again. We've been through another haul out and one of our masts is up, making decisions easier as we're currently working on the rig and it's no longer just in theory. Nice. Between the whole deal, we should you should have about 300. <laughs> nice. Of these guys. Thanks, man. 300 feet. These are some. So awesome. And they're heavy. Remember last time we you read quandary about which way mm -hmm. to finish them up. Yeah, yeah. So my thought, like I was saying on the phone, I think it should be just fine as like that to just put you know a groove on both of them and then on the lower ones. Um, yeah, just use line, put two eyes in it, yeah. serve it like up. Like you said, seize it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll probably serve parcel or serve the whole thing up and then seize it here and then bolt it through the chain plate. Yeah. And, you know, I think that should be just fine. I think I might use five eighths line for this. Yeah. Now you want them all done that way or? Yeah.
Making up a jig. <laughs> Make Classy <it> jig. <laughs> Set up now. And the groove on the top dead eyes and the one in the bottom the same size? Yeah, we're gonna yeah. do the same size. Make it Typically easy. on the bottom dead eye you'll have something like that. Uh-huh. Um I mean also it could be either way, because most of the time on the lower dead eyes that you have a metal piece, um, like either a flat strap mm -hmm. or like a forged round um piece of steel that's kind of like hammered out flat on the end and mm -hmm. it's heated up and bent around okay we're basically going to do the same concept of that one but we're just going to do it with um line like some dyneema or something like that and put two eyes in it and then serve that piece and splice and uh, seize it at the bottom and then bolt that through the chain plate so it'll be the same concept but it'll just be a, a soft piece instead of a steel piece. Now on to chafe protection. But there will be one hole on the upper dead eye that will hold the stopper knot where the lanyard is started so it will be left alone. You can always take some meat off with this because it does it faster and then finish it off later. Extremely sharp. <laughs> Thank you. 
out pretty good. I think so. See ya. Okay. Hey, cute weirdness. What's going on? What is this? <laughs> Snake hamster pencil holder. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Where's the hamster? The hamster. Oh, in the middle. 